G'day guys, I've had a request to do this particular physics problem that was in, I think it was a physics exam from a couple of years ago. It's uh, on the surface, it's relatively complicated, but you know, once we've dug dig down, you'll notice that there's not really that much to this question at all. So let's have a go at it. So we've got a thin metal rod is bent into a right angle and hung on a nail from a wall as shown in the diagram. Assume that there is no contact between the rod and the wall. The longer side, L2, is 80 centimeters or 0 0.8 meters long. So let's write that in. We've got this side here. So this is going to be a 0 0.8 meters. Cool. And makes an angle of 14 degrees to the vertical. Cool. So they've written that in for us. The rod has a uniform density and constant thickness. Calculate the length of the shorter side, L1, show all of workings. Okay. So to start with, it's been, this has been bent into a right angle. So if this is 14 degrees, it's pretty safe to say that the other one is going to be 76 degrees. So let's write that one in as well. Cool. So as you can imagine, guys, this is like a, um, you know, forces or torques in equilibrium or statics, whatever you want to call the problem. So basically, the situation we have here is this um, rod isn't moving. So because this rod isn't working, we have to assume that we're going to, well, we're not assuming, we're going to say, let um, the sum of the torques clockwise equal the sum of the torques anti-clockwise. So basically what we're doing here is we're going to work out what's rotating it clockwise and we're going to equate it to what's rotating it anti-clockwise and probably using that sort of relationship we're going to be able to solve for how long this side would have to be. Okay, so what we know, well hopefully you guys know, is that all the force in any of these situations acts through the object's center of mass so we're going to be turning about the nail, so we're going to have the center of mass of L1, which we don't know where, where it is because we don't know the length of L1, but we can safely say that it's probably going to be around about there. And if we draw a line down, so this is going to be the force that's acting due to gravity down here. And we've got L2, which will have a center of mass approximately, I would say there somewhere and it's going to have a force acting down due to gravity that way. Cool. So this force here is going to be equal to mg. Same with this one. So basically I'm just writing in what we're given so far. And we know that the distance from the center of mass on L2, because it's constant thickness, constant density, is going to be 0 0.4 from this point to that point. Cool. So you might also be asking me, well, Harold, we don't know what the mass is because it doesn't tell us the mass. It just says that there's a uniform density. Okay. Well, what we're going to do then is if it hasn't given us the mass, we're just going to label this uniform density rho. So that's going to be the density or the cross-sectional density of the, um, the rod. So what we're going to say is Per unit length, it's going to weigh row units. Okay, so the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to try and take the fact that we don't know its density or its mass out of the equation. So, for any mass then, m, we can say if it'll follow that the mass of any amount of this rod is going to be equal to the length of the amount of rod we're talking about times the density. Cool. So, what we have here is on the L2 side, so we could say the, um, the mass of L2 would be equal to rho times 0 0.8. And I'm just going to leave it as that to start with. Okay, so from here we're going to back to this a concept of static equilibrium. And so what we have to do is to start with, we're going to have to calculate the torques in the clockwise direction. And to do this to start with, we're going to have to find the component 
of the force which is generated by the weight of this L2 section, the component of that which is it acting at right angles to um, the actual rod. So we're going to have to find a component vector which will be acting in the clockwise direction. Cool, so we've just drawn a force triangle uh, here, or a vector triangle. So what we're going to be looking for is we're going to be looking for this one here. This is our F perpendicular. So what we're going to do to find out F perpendicular, we know because of uh, similar triangles, if this angle here is 14 degrees, that what that means is this angle here is going to be 14 degrees, and as a result, this angle here is going to be equal to 14 degrees. Great. So what I can say is here, I can say that the force perpendicular is equal to mg sine of 14 degrees, which is equal to, because the mass is not, we, we don't know the mass, but we have to do it in terms of the length, we're going to say that this is going to be equal to 0 0.8 rho times, and then we've got g, which we know is 9.8, times the sine of 14 degrees. Great. So this here is going to be our force perpendicular to um, the rod length L2. So what we have to do to get the actual torque, we know that the the torque in the clockwise direction is equal to the perpendicular force times distance. So this is going to be equal to the perpendicular force is this times 0 0.4, that's the distance, because then I'm going to put sine 14 on the end. Cool. So let's just leave it as that, as the, um, you know, the product of some factors. So, once we've got this, this is then going to have to equate to the anti-clockwise rotation. So, what we're going to do is, again, we're going to um, draw a force triangle on our, um, you know, force that will equate to the uh, perpendicular force generated by the L2 section's weight. Okay, so now we have another force perpendicular. We're going to we're looking for this one. And so what we know is we know if this angle here is 76, then we know that if we're bringing this down, this angle here is going to be also equal to 76. So that's just 76 degrees. Cool. So let's do some working out. So let's call this force perpendicular. This was force perpendicular 1. So let's we're going to calculate force perpendicular two, or yeah, they're wrapped around the other way, but let's that doesn't matter. It's the second one that we're calculating. Now, what this is going to be equal to again is mg. But instead of sine of 14, this is going to be sine of uh, 76 degrees. And this is going to be equal to mg. Now, we don't know the length of L1, so we're going to keep that as just L. So we know that the mass is equal to rho L times gravity, which is 9.8 times the sine of 76 degrees. Cool. Now, what we can also say is if we have this, we can then say, well, the torque anti-clockwise, again, is going to be equal to force perpendicular times distance, which is equal to this 
but our distance this time is going to be half of the length of L1, which we've said is L. So we're going to have rho L times 9.8 sine of 76 times the length of the where the um, well the distance from the turning point to the center of mass which is just the total distance because it's uh, constant density and uh, width the total distance on 2 so we can simplify that up to go well this is going to be equal to um, rho L squared over 2 times 9.8 sine of 76. All right, so from here we're going to go back again to this concept of like, you know, a object being in static equilibrium. And so if we, because of this, we can say that for this to be true, um, 0 0.8 8 rho times 9.8 times 0 0.4 times the sine of 14 has to be equal to rho L squared on 2 times 9.8 times the sine of 76. Cool. So, what we can do is we're just going to do a bit of algebra. There's 9.8 on both sides of the equal sign. So if we divide one side by 9.8, it's going to cancel it on both. So we can just, let's just get rid of it. Um, we can times both sides by, 0 point, oh, by 2 to get rid of the 2 on this side. So what that's going to do... What I'm going to do is so I can continue to do this with that calculator. I'm going to go, well, that's going to be equal to 0 0.8 rho. And rather than times it by 0 0.4, I'm going to times it by 0 0.8. So times 0 0.8 times the sine of 14 equals rho L squared times the sine of 76. Cool. So you can see that we have rho on both sides as well. So like the 9.8, we can get rid of that. Um, let's equate this side. So we have, um, I'll just separate it from up here. 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 is 0 0.64. times the sine of 14 is equal to L squared times the sine of 76. So, a little bit of extra algebra. It's pretty easy to say, therefore, L is going to be equal to the square root of 0 0.64 sine of, oh Jesus, sine of 14 divided by the sine of 76. And that, my friends, is equal to a length of exactly 0 0.40 meters. So, you can see that, you know, the basic concepts of static equilibrium haven't changed in this question. The only difference is we haven't been given, like, exact masses to work with. What we have to do is, because of this uh, constant density, we're just using sort of the principle that if we have a constant density, constant thickness, then the mass of each side is going to be directly proportional to the length of each side. So, what we're doing is we 
basically from the start, we put the um, mass in terms of length and then substitute that in for the mass when we're calculating the force perpendicular to each of these sections of the rod. So that's probably the most complicated part of the question. The rest of it is just a simple statics problem. But, you know, to get your head around that on the fly in an exam, I would imagine it would be quite hard for a lot of students. So, you know, I hope this video helped, guys. Just, I would go through it a couple of times just to make sure that, you know, you're right with all of my workings and stuff like that and how I got to this uh, 0 0.4. If the video helped, uh, give it a thumbs up. You know, subscribe to my channel. I've got tons of videos on you know physics, maths, chemistry, you know, you name it. If you have any questions, if you want to message them to me, I'll do my best to solve them. Um, but until next time, guys, um, enjoy your study.